So nauseous pines, this noxious abyss, I feed from the milk of ultraviolet. Yet I'm lost with you, my floating twin. You're the anchor to the drain, but I am the key to nothing. My name is Groudon, and I'm reviewing Steam games in alphabetical order to find the hidden gems among the piles of garbage, and today we're reviewing slash slash NPPD Rush slash slash hyphen The Milk of Ultraviolet. And no, I won't be saying that every time. Let's begin. I honestly struggled to know where to begin with this review, because NPPD Rush is just... something. Not something special, just... something. NPPD Rush was created by Rail Slave Games and released on Steam in 2014. At its core, it's a retro-stylized, top-down, bullet-hell-style game that leans heavily into the 80s PC gaming aesthetics, with a techno-rock heavy soundtrack. This is a game trying to make a statement, much like the punk scene of the 70s and 80s. This is reflected in the story of the game too, which is one of the wilder video game plots I've come across so far. Emphasis on the so far, as I'm sure there's more weird stuff to come. Anyway, here's the plot. It's the 1980s and the city of Nauseous Pines is in the grip of a designer drug called Nox, developed and distributed by a nightclub owner called Ultraviolet. You were a victim of the Nox drug, and you've woken up to find your ruined body has been salvaged and merged with a high-powered police superbike, and you are now part of the NPPD Rush unit. Everything is controlled with WASD and the mouse, and there are zero settings, so it's time to dive in and rescue people from the streets of this awful city. Now I'm just going to throw this out there, but I'm not sure that trusting someone who was a moment ago a literal drug addict, to the point of nearly dying, with a high-powered superbike and an infinite supply of bullets is a good idea. Call me closed-minded or whatever, but I feel like there should be a better solution. Anyway, here we are. The main character is actually not named, so say hello to Theo, the cat guy. Although Theo was saved, they only have a little over 4 minutes to live, as this timer will count down, and Theo will die if it runs out. Before this happens, Theo will need to navigate through 5 maze-like floors of this weirdly multi-layered motorway and rescue 30 Nox victims along the way. The gameplay is fast-paced and frantic, with a feel similar to something you may have expected to find in an old arcade machine. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay boils down to navigating through the maze-like levels while shooting everything in sight, collecting the money that they drop, and searching for the Nox victims. There are exactly 30 spread out over all five levels, so you do need to explore thoroughly to make sure none are missed. The controls are tight, so any mistakes, like driving into bullets instead of away from them, should feel like your fault. I say should, because more often than not, getting hit isn't your fault. The top-down viewpoint is incredibly zoomed in, to the point of making everything feel cramped, confined and claustrophobic, and there isn't any way to zoom out. Combine this with the fact that enemies can and will start shooting you from off-screen, with the incredibly busy pixel art graphics means that everything tends to turn into a frantic mess and dying rarely feels like your fault. What this does achieve is a sense of urgency and desperation, because all of these elements combined make it feel like everything, including the game itself, is working against you. I honestly wouldn't blame you for looking away from the gameplay footage, because it's such a mess of visuals. Between the busy backgrounds, grotesque enemies, bullets flying everywhere, and the rapid movement speed, it looks like pixel vomit. I feel a bit bad saying this, because I'm sure someone out there will love this art style and aesthetic, and I think it would have actually worked if I could see about twice as much on screen. The in-game music adds to everything in just the wrong way, amplifying everything to create an audio-visual nightmare that attacks the senses. In isolation, the music is good, matching the aesthetics of the game, but for some tracks the loops happen too frequently and the pacing is relentless, compounding the issues and creating something that feels at first extremely overwhelming for the senses. That said, as a complete package I think it delivers on what it's set out to achieve, and this is a style that simply isn't for me. I applaud the artistic direction, but I'll do so from a block over while wearing sunglasses and earplugs. Thanks. Anyway, back to the gameplay. Each level starts and finishes at a set of stairs that allows Theo to access other floors as well as shops to purchase upgrades. In a nice touch, the floors can be completed in any order, except for the fifth floor which must be done last. Although the game describes itself as open world, given how small the levels are, I personally think this is a bit of a stretch. 
The level layouts and enemy placements are also static, so learning the best path through them is necessary in order to beat the game. In between each level, Theo can purchase a handful of upgrades, the most important being additional time. You can also replenish Theo's health, but this comes at the cost of both money and time, so be careful and don't do what I did, because you might accidentally end your game early by trying to heal when you're low on time. There is also one weapon upgrade available for purchase, and I would recommend grabbing this for Theo as soon as possible, as it does make the game much easier. Lastly, if you think you've missed some of the Nox victims, you can purchase hmm, replacements from one of the shops. If you explore each level thoroughly, you shouldn't need to use this though. I think it's also worth mentioning that there are no save files, but as the game can be completed in 10 to 20 minutes, it's not really necessary. This is definitely a game meant to be played in one sitting. That said, there also isn't a pause button. Pressing escape will simply exit the game, so keep that in mind if you decide to play this. Right. So Theo has found all 30 Nox victims and made it to the end of the fifth and final floor. What now? It turns out Theo's not here to meet a fellow officer. Instead, you come face to face with the prototype for the Rush project and Nox victims were fed into her, being reborn with a desire to save other Nox victims. Theo is one of these reborn Nox victims and has been saving, or rather collecting, other Nox victims off the streets to unwittingly deliver and feed to his creator, perpetuating the cycle. Gross. Not being a fan of, well, any of this, Theo fights back and after a minute or so of dodging the constant barrage of bullets and projectiles, the Rush prototype is destroyed. We're given a final score based on how long it took to beat the game and Theo retreats into the desert, haunted by the screams of those they saved only to unwittingly feed into the Rush project. Sorry, Theo. We also get this lovely old school photo of a gentleman on a bicycle with a mounted rifle, making me wonder if this entire thing was some drug-fueled hallucination, which it very well may have been. Finally, as the outro plays, you have just enough time to wonder what the heck just happened. I admire the NPPD Rush Devs, Rail Slave Games, for having a vision and seeing it through. And that's probably the nicest thing I can say about this game. Unfortunately, what they have created simply isn't fun. For $4.49 Canadian, or your regional equivalent, you'll get around an hour of playtime. It took me five attempts to beat the game, but of course your mileage may vary, assuming you want to force yourself to endure this game, that is. I'm not sure why you would though, that's why you're watching this video after all. I don't know for certain what could be done to improve this game, but I don't think there are any easy fixes other than having a more zoomed out field of vision to make navigation, exploration and combat more enjoyable. The core mechanics work well, but the visuals need to be cleaned up and more progression options would be welcome. This is honestly tough to critique because I think that Rail Slave Games have made the game they wanted to make and it simply isn't for me. Trying to look at it objectively, I struggle to see a reason why even the most hardcore bullet hell or retro gamers would enjoy this game over many better games available. If you're looking for a unique experience or something that feels like it forcibly removed itself from a fever dream, this is definitely it and it'll live in your head rent free for a while, but not in a good I need to tell everyone about this game kind of way, but more of a what the heck was that kind of way? All of this considered, my final rating for slash slash NPPD Rush slash slash hyphen the milk of ultraviolet is Nox out of 10. It'll make time slip through your fingers, time that you'll wish you could get back. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the end of the video! A massive thank you to all the channel members on screen for supporting the channel, especially our two Knights of the Holy Grail, Freaky Feline and Loveheart Gonzi. If you'd like to become a member, you can do for blah blah blah. If you'd like to become a member, you can do so for as little as a dollar per month. Just click the join button to see the available membership levels and perks. Thank you for joining me on this weird gaming adventure through the depths of Steam, and I'll see you next time in another game by Rail Slave Games. Oh boy. Until then, take care.